I had today is what Thursday. Yep. Between Monday and today, we had seven people come into my office with kidney stones. Mm -hmm. Could you believe that in Grenada, right here? Wow. Seven people. Yeah. And when you look at some of the stones, they're, they're, they're very big. Some of them are big stones. So we're trying to educate our people on, 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 on how to take care of the kidney and prevent kidney stones. All right? Because the different type of stones, you know. Mm -hmm. There were 16 stones. And there was uric acid stones. Mm -hmm. And there was calcium crystal stones. Mm -hmm. So there are three different kinds of stones. So people think um, when you have stones, it's just one particular kind of stone. No, no, yeah. Just the battle they think. Uh -huh. But because the main stones is crystal. calcium crystals yeah. from calcium, mm -hmm. and but you have uric acid stones, and then you have cysteine stones, and the cysteine mm -hmm. stones come from when you're not metabolizing um, B6 and L cysteine properly, so you get cysteine stones. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is what caused the the, 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 the cysteine stones. Okay. Right, uh, but they they, they, they they are rare unless you are deficient. In this vitamin and that particular amino acid, uric acid stone is from proteins. Too much protein build up in the blood because of the liver, and automatically you start to get uric acid stones. But how do you know which kind you have? You know? Well, the doctors will determine that. That's why taking a test is important. The doctors will tell you, will, will, will make you understand which one is cysteine and which one is. But mostly, eighty percent of the stones is coming from from um, the crystals. <laughs> calcium crystals, mm -hmm. cheese. Is a culprit. Mm -hmm. Milk is a culprit. And I want to mention about milk this morning. Lots of people feel you see all these television commercials about milk. And I want to come on your program for another comment to see a we FM. It's me, Patrick Dell saying it. Patrick Dell, not we FM. Alright? It's not the registration, it's me. Milk have calcium, but the calcium that milk has is not organic calcium. It's inorganic. Meaning that well, once they, one, when they pasteurize the milk, the, the calcium that comes from the grass that the cow eat disappears with the vitamin D because they need vitamin D for absorption of calcium, right? Now, once they pasteurize the milk, the, the calcium that is naturally found in the milk from the cow disappears. So what the, the dairy companies do is they inject a, 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 a hormone, calcium, in the milk. The problem with that calcium is it is inorganic. You follow me? Yeah. So if it's inorganic, hear what it does. The first thing that the calcium from the milk causes is troubles in your heart. It causes plaque to form in the arterial walls. And that's the reason why I, when I come on your program, I have research. I have studies. I'm not coming and tell you and your, and, your, and your audiences what Patrick does saying. There are studies or there are research proving that calcium from the milk clogs the artery. That's a fact. Number two, the soldiers who died in the Korean War, 19 to 21 year old soldiers, when they opened the chest for the autopsy, they found lots of calcium from milk in the walls. They were full of arterial blockage already at that particular age. And they used to drink a lot of milk. Oh. Even three year old too, when they die, calcium plaque in the walls. That is one of the negative of the calcium in the milk. That's number two, that's number one. Number two, guess what it caused again? It caused kidney stones, right? Because once you start to drink lots of milk and it get into the system, the parathyroid, which is surrounding your thyroid itself, they're supposed to do what? Metabolize calcium and the B complex. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you have an overactive thyroid gland, we work on your parathyroid because you're not metabolizing calcium and the B complex well. So once calcium is inorganic and cannot be, cannot be metabolized by the parathyroid, it becomes solid. Where? In the earth, which is the earth again, your digestive system coming back in your kidney and mixed with oxalic acid and cause you to have kidney stones. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And that's why the doctors themselves will tell you once you have kidney stones, do not drink milk and do not eat cheese. That's the first band they put on you. But they tell you drink cranberry juice. 
So when they come to me and say, you're drinking cranberry juice? Yeah, I say, who told you to drink cranberry juice? My doctor says so. I say, well, the doctor is wrong. Because if calcium crystals mixed with oxalic acid gives you kidney stones, huh? and you're drinking cranberry juice, guess what have oxalic acid? Cranberry juice. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying here? So you're putting fire in your fire. So I always teach my patients that the only time you drink can cranberry juice is to do what? To prevent bacteria from adhering on your bladder walls. If you have kidney stones, leave cranberry juice alone. If you have cystitis, leave cranberry juice alone because it has oxalic acid. And once you have any kind of trouble in the bladder, you don't use sugars. And a lot of the cranberry juices, they have 27 grams of sugar in the first place. Waste of time. See? So that is the main cause of kidney stones. Now, I want to mention to the people now. If you go to your doctor, and the doctor send you to get a, an ultrasound of the kidney, and they pick up stone in your kidney, do not go to any herbalist if the kidney stones is too big. Because if the stones are too big, they would not co come through your pole and you're going to get pain. Mm -hmm. They can also be small and give you pain too because they have things like fingernails. So when they come in, they jag your, they start jagging your tissue. So you feel like they're joking your back. Now, if the stones are in the upper pole, you get pain in the upper back. If the stones are in the lower pole, in the middle pole, you get pain in the middle of the back. If the stones is in the lower pole, you get pain in the lower back, but the pain comes around your waist. Right, and you, you, feel, you feel that on one side. Yes, that's a, that's a symptom of it, okay. if you have kidney stones. Now, when you got kidney stones now, as I said, when the stones is too big, you don't go to a herbalist. And the problem we have in, in Grenada is we do not blast the stones out. We don't do that. So we have to, people have to go to Trinidad. If the stones are small, we can move them out with herbs. Let me give you the name of the herbs now. The first herb is called gravel root, G-R-E-V-E-L. Gravel root. <laughs> when you have kidney stones, you must use that. When you have kidney stones, you must use another herb called stone root, S-T-O-N-E-R-O-O-T. -E you must use them because they crush the stones up. Not if the stones is too big. When you have kidney stones, you must use diuretics or you must use antiseptic plants. To the bladder, corn silk, or we call it corn beard in Grenada. Another herb again, we use it, another herb called Uverasi. What these herbs do, while the gravel root and the stone root is crushing the stones, these herbs are helping the stones to be removed via the urine, pushing them out of the bladder walls. Yeah? Yeah. Now, so we use diuretics, we use antiseptics, and we use the stone crushers. Now, once you have kidney stones, Remember that the stones, although they are small and they're coming to the pole, they have things like fingernails They could always joke you and give you, cause you to have pain. So what we do, we give you a quarter cup of olive oil and a quarter cup of lemon juice and we mix them together. And we give you, we make you take a teaspoon every hour from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. for four days. And the purpose of that is to lubricate the pole so when the stones coming down, they don't give you that pain. Because you know oil is a lubricator. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When you're going to have you know the virgin thing, I think you use, I think use a Vaseline. So you know you must use the oil for the stones. So that is what we get rid of stones. Now, people who have kidney stones, the stone could come back. Because you can make anything that you had before, a disease, come back to you. If you go back to the same way of eating. See? So my advice to patients is, to my patients is, once you have kidney stones, try to avoid going back eating cheese, number one, and try to use magnesium. Don't forget the mineral now. You see that mineral? Lots of people is lacking in that particular mineral, Mikey. Magnesium. They're lacking in that. 80% of the American public is lacking in magnesium. And that's why lots of women get period pain. Period pain. Is because of lacking of magnesium because it works on muscle and it works on the nerves. See, it's a, it's a, it's a relaxer.
So what the, the magnesium do, once calcium come into the body, hmm, magnesium calls it as a traffic cop. And if there is not enough magnesium to call calcium, calcium gets stuck in your soft tissues and cause you to have not only troubles in your heart, but cause you to get kidney stones also. So once you have, once you have kidney stones, you must implement a mineral called calcium, mag magnesium in your diet. A thousand milligrams per day will guide the calcium out so that the stones don't come back. That's the key, all right? That's how we fix kidney stones. But before you, be, before you do that, you have to understand um, what your calcium levels are before taking that. Good question. I see I like it. That's a good question. I'm on my toes. I'm, 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 I'm thinking. If there is organic calcium, hmm? if there is excess, I'm going to use the word organic loosely, if there is an excessive amount of calcium, and it is organic, it moves out naturally. Because it's water soluble. Just like vitamin C. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. So that's why you gotta take it during the day, space it out. You can't take you can't just take five thousand milligrams of vitamin C per day. You're crazy. Because you peed out in the urine. So you take a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. You know, uh, 2,000, 2,000, and 1,000 per day because it's water soluble vitamin. Be completely the same thing to the old vitamins, they're all water soluble. So, if there is an excess and it is organic, like sodium is, it will move out. See? So, your calcium, because the body is, the body is wise, the body knows to get rid of certain things. Mm -hmm. So, the body will keep that level normal if the mineral is organic. But when you have inorganic calcium in your body, now you start to store them now because they can't move because they're inorganic. See what I'm saying to you? Yeah. And that's where the plaque in the walls come from. That's where your heart troubles come from. Mm -hmm. That's where your high blood pressure come from. That's where your kidney stones come from. Mm -hmm. Because inorganic calcium is no good for you. You see what I'm saying to you? Just like sodium. Lots of people go to the store, they buy the table salt. That's inorganic sodium because they polish that. Sodium chloride. See? And inorganic sodium, in Chinese medicine we say that salt goes down and in and sugar goes up and out. So once you have too much salt in your diet and it's not organic sodium, you start to get what? Troubles in your joints. You start to get arthritis. You start to get troubles in your veins. You start to get varicose veins because it's not organic. You see what I'm saying here? Yeah. But when you use the sea salt that is natural and, in, and, and, and is organic, the excessive will move out of the body unless you're not metabolizing sodium and phosphorus well then you will try to have, start to have trouble in your kidney long term mm -hmm. so that's how we get rid of calcium so if, if so inorganic calcium don't move organic calcium moves so you can take a test and your calcium is supposed to be around 9.5 10.0 that's where it's supposed to be if it's over that you have too much calcium but if you're over that because you have too much you know inorganic calcium in your body that's the bottom line so always take a calcium supplement in the liquid form, from food base, from food base, from minerals or nuts and seeds, because calcium in the tablets don't work. So people pop calcium in the tablet. Oh, I'm taking calcium from my bones. It doesn't work. They don't. Not in the tablet form anyway. And that's why people have so much arthritis. It don't work. Because remember, you know a lot of older people, they see the teeth at the shake, they lose the teeth. Why do they lose the teeth? Because they, they are deficient in calcium. It's not found in the bones. Because the body is so acidic that when the body is in an acid state, the body pulls calcium out of the bones to buffer the acid, to prevent the acid from going into the arterial walls. So you must have organic calcium, and you must have the body in an alkaline state in order for you not to lose calcium and trouble, have trouble in your bones and have trouble in your teeth. Bottom line, people have to be educated about these things. So calcium on the tablet, don't even buy it. It's a waste of time. It don't do nothing for you. It sticks in the system. But organic calcium in the liquid form, in the powder form, is much better because it's organic. It moves faster. And you have to know what calcium, calcium carbonate, calcium citrate, calcium discalcitrate, all the levels, 
They said, I got me to say it. So people have to know what they're buying. That's number one. 